afternoon, the final game, 19 regular season. Tampa Bay will head to Oakland after this ball game and take on the Athletics on Wednesday in American League Wild Card Game. Let's take a look at Kevin Gash's lineup. They've won 96 games and that ties a franchise high. Obviously, Garcia is in a right field. He's got an eight game hit streak, six RBIs during those eight games. Kevin Kiermaier is in center. He's the only player from 2013 that was on the postseason roster for that American League wild card game. He has postseason experience. Daniel Robertson, Matt Duffy, Mike Zanino behind the plate. And they're set to take on Clay Buckholz. 12th start of the season for Clay. Last time out, four innings against Baltimore and allowed three home runs. First time he had done that since 2016. The veteran's been on the mound a long time. This is his 218th career start. He's got a career earn run average of 399. Outstanding. He's making his third start against Tampa Bay in his career 269 ERA versus the Rays. Best versus any AL club in his career. Luke Maley is behind the plate for Buckholz. He has said here's the first pitch to Yandy Diaz. He cuts and fouls it up. Diaz literally flew in Toronto to into Toronto last night. He has been injured. He had a fractured foot. They're anxious to see how he swings the bat. They want him to knock off some of that rest with the possibility of being added to that wild card roster. He was down in Florida participating in the instructional league to try and get his timing down. And the Rays just need to see what that timing looks like against big league pitching. So he will start at the DFDH spot. Will probably play the whole game, get four at bats, and then they will make the decision if he makes that playoff roster or not. 1 1 pitch, breaking ball catches the top of the strike zone for strike two. Clay Buckholz pitched on Monday. Got off to a decent start, but then ran into trouble. Gave up a three run a home run to Austin Hayes in the third inning of that outing against Baltimore. He went four plus three batters and really had trouble in the fifth inning. Back to back home runs by VR and Hayes. He's had two home runs in that game. Finishing off hitters, finishing off innings. His last two times to the mound have been a problem for Clay. Looking to end his season on a high note. He has fouls enough. Jesus Aguilar, he has that catcher's mask there. He took one on the side of the face, sitting in the same spot yesterday. He was the DH. Today is not in the stunning lineup. Just in case. Lottie Guerrero Jr., he too is not in the stunning lineup, dealing with a little knee soreness. Here's the one two pitch and it's lined to the third baseman Valera. Nice play by Brevik Valera at third making his first start of the season at third base for the Blue Jays. Well what attracted Yandy Diaz to the Tampa Bay Rays was his exit velocity and hard hit contact and he starts this game off with a hard hit ball but there's Valera playing third base a step and a dive. That's why they call it the hot corner as that ball curves right into him for the first out. Here's Tommy Pham. Pham is the left fielder this afternoon. Pham had a good start to this series as he hit a home run in his second at bat on Friday. A two run home run and that got the Tampa Bay Rays off and running. They would eventually win that game six to two the home run number twenty one for Tommy Pham. Inside ball on the strike. Clay Buckholz has missed a lot of time with injuries. He started the season on the injured list and he missed significant time later on in the season. A check swing roller back to the mound. That'll be two quick outs for Buckholz. Let's take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays. Jonathan Davis is in center, Hernandez in left, Grichik in right, and Justin Smoke possibly his final game as a Blue Jay today. Yeah, we have to mention him, and if you look at his numbers as a Blue Jay, they're incredible. 595th game at first base for the Jays. In five errors, Smokey's committed 14 errors in five years. That's a 997 fielding percentage, 4,621 total chances. Justin's had 14 errors in five seasons. He has been a rock for the Blue Jays over at first base. 
not only on the field but in the clubhouse on the bench he's been a terrific pro ever since he's joined this organization. He certainly has been a fine mentor to Rowdy Telez and Telez appreciates all the tips that Smoke has shared with him. Where did those five years go? Isn't that I, something? I remember when he came here, we're like, wow, that's a nice pickup for the Jays. Good and we player. always watched him both with Seattle and Texas and thought, well, he'd be a good guy to have, and he certainly has been. Toronto certainly thanks Justin Smoke and the entire Smoke family. They've been involved in the community ever since they've arrived. Three, you know, this is G-Man Choi, and this is another interesting at bat for Tampa Bay. Choi fouled the ball off his foot Wednesday, he left the ball game. He has not played since, and they want to see whether or not he has good timing in this game. They say that he's going to play one, maybe two at bats, depending it, on how he does. It depends on what his at bats look like. The ball is hit in the air to left field. Hernandez going back, drifting back, and misplayed it. That ball is off the fence and to ask Hernandez just kept drifting instead of getting back to the wall and getting to the wall and making a catch. The outfield play for this Blue Jays ball club has to improve. That's a ball that's got to be caught. If it stays into the ballpark like that and hit high enough it's got to be caught and the best way to do that sprint back to the wall and then make the adjustment. But watch as you can see just kind of drifting and that ball keeps taking off on him. It's about the middle of the wall just off of his glove and it will go for extra bases. Yeah, as an outfitter you run to the wall and then you can always come back in toward the field once you get to that fence. So it's a double for G man Choi. I mean, Garcia has an eight game hit streak. Hitting 387 during the hit streak batting 281 for the season. He's had a nice year with 20 homers and 72 RBIs. Marcos misses with that first pitch. It's a nice pickup I think for the Tampa Bay Rays to find a bat like this as the White Sox let him go. Just let him go. Non tendered him and they picked him up. Said we will put him in our outfield. He's got a career high 20 home runs. Hit 19 last year with the White Sox. Finally broke through the first for the first time in his career with 20 home runs. He might be an important guy for this Tampa Bay Raid team on Wednesday. Yeah he's a right handed hitter and it sounds as though Sean Manaya, the lefty will start for Oakland. And then Jesus Lazardo, who closed out their one nothing win last night in Seattle might follow in Manaya. so right handed bats might be a real premium for Tampa Bay home run hitters. You're right 20 home runs a guy in the middle of the lineup who can drive in runs he's driven in 72. So breaking ball for a strike it's two and one to Garcia. Everybody wants to finish up on a strong note we mentioned that Clay Buckles his last time out could not get out of the fifth inning. It was against Baltimore three home runs allowed as Pat mentioned the first time since 2016 that he'd given up three homers in a game. He'd get those quick outs and then just couldn't finish off the Orioles. Trying to finish off the Rays in the first. Ball and they're blocked by Maley. Three and one now to Garcia. He started well in that game against Baltimore. A one, two, three, first inning. Faced three batters in the second inning, got the first two outs in the third inning, and that's when the trouble started hitting Clay again with two outs. Gave up a three run home run. Got the first two outs in the fourth, two more base runners, and then couldn't get it out in the fifth inning. Three balls in his strike, two outs. Runner at second base is G Man Choi. There's a strike. Ooh. Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, is the home plate umpire this afternoon. Kevin Kiermaier hitting in the fifth spot in the order. Kiermaier is a little bit of a slide lately, batting 229 in this season. Here's where Buckholz had his problems closing out innings in his last start against the Orioles. Last two starts against Baltimore. Couldn't finish him off. Got it. Down 
and in with the fastball, and Garcia strikes out. Tampa Bay will leave a base runner in scoring position. Top of the order for the Blue Jays when we hit well in September, which is really saying a lot about a rookie playing in the month of September deep into the season and still putting up good numbers. 235 for the season. And they will take on the reigning American League Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell. Yeah, if he's going to continue it, he's going to have to do it against one of the best. Starting to get healthy. He spent a couple of times on the injured list this year with a right toe. He also had some arthroscopic surgery on July the 29th. Starting to get into shape as they build him up for the playoffs. Maybe three, four innings today. That's what they are hoping from, from Cyzilla. This is his third outing since coming off the injured list. He has thrown 26 pitches and then 52 in his next outing. He also had a couple of rehab starts for their Triple A team in the International League playoffs before he came back up to the big leagues. Off the plate outside. Two balls and a strike to Hernandez. He had a leadoff home run in the game yesterday. Was against the left hander as well. Ryan Neombro gave up that home run, including two other runs in the first inning. Cut on and missed by Hernandez. They ask her looking for his first hit in his career against Blake Snell. Oscar's 0 for 7 against Snell. There's a lot of guys in that category against Blake Snell. Shift is on for Hernandez. G Man Choi, the lone defender on the right side of second base. Gavin Biggio on deck. Full count. Foul back. Yesterday against Ryan Yarbrough, Cutter in the first inning before he settled in. Teoscar is going to take advantage of that by drilling that ball straight ahead to center field. Number 25 on the season as he continues to add to his career high. There's a base hit right through the shift into left field. A leadoff single for Hernandez. Tampa Bay always has one of the best defensive ball clubs in the outfit. They've got a lot of speed in Fam Kiermaier and Garcia, and they want to see G Man Choi move around over at first base. Yeah, so he might not be here very long, so let's highlight him today. His 90 second start over at first base. Got to see if he's going to be healthy enough for the playoffs, so he will get the start today having at bat maybe two. They want to see him how he is defensively and offensively. So G, G Man Choi is a very important person in this. Lineup for this Tampa Bay Ray team. It's Kevin Biggio. He has not faced Snell prior to this at bat. Kevin takes one up and in. Again, the shift in this double play situation. You can see Robertson, the second baseman, not very deep at second. And Thomas staying close to the bag at second. Ball on the strike. Busy is at 235 against lefties. That's where his season average is. 235 against righties. He's had 14 hits to left field. He says, I want to make that go up. And the best way to do that, stay on the ball just a little bit longer. There's a base hit into center field. Hernandez will stop at second as Kiermaier gets it back in. And Kevin Bisher, that's 29 games he's reached base with a first inning single. That's how you fight that fastball off from Blake Snell. He's got a lot of pitches to get you out with, but that's a fastball that's up in the zone, and Kevin fights it off. Doesn't get great wood on it. Might have broke his bat, but it's going to end up into the outfield for another hit. Not a way to get it out of the way early. His on base streak is the longest since Jose Bautista's 33 game streak back in 2016. It's now 29 games in a row. And he will take that into next year. Facing a tough lefty today in Blake Snell. The Blue Jays open up with the Red Sox next year, so it might be Chris Sale or David Price 
if he wants to continue it. So here's Randall Grichik. He's just two for 14 hitting against Blake Snell. This is how Blue Jays started the game yesterday. They jumped on Ryan Yarborough quickly. Scored three runs on four hits before they had an out. Grichik was a big part of that, wasn't he? Hit a triple down the right field corner. RBI triple. Number just wasn't really sharp early in the ball game, but he settled in nicely and gave them five good innings. And hits it in the air to right. Not deep, Garcia. Shallow in right makes the catch. One away. Well, we are going to keep track of a couple of big games going on. Brewers are into Rockies. Adrian Hauser from Milwaukee against Jeff Hoffman, the former Blue Jay for Colorado. And then in St. Louis, pretty interesting. Nara Collin of the Cubs will face Jack Flaherty, who is the Cardinals' best pitcher. And if the Cardinals lose and the Brewers win, there will be a game 163 tomorrow in St. Louis. It starts at 3.09 Eastern time if they should happen to time. So you can catch those games on 360 or Sportsnet 1. We'd love for you to stay right here and watch the Jays, but if you want to go over during commercial breaks, totally understand. Big day in baseball. Rowdy Telez batting with one on. He pops it in the air on the infield. Shortstop Willie Adamas takes charge. He makes the catch. First baseman number 14, Justin Smoke. Justin Smoke is 32 years old, and you can see the fans appreciate what Smoke has done as a member of this Blue Jays ball club. This is his fifth season with the Jays. He's had 117 home runs in a Blue Jays uniform. Two outs, two on. There goes Hernandez for third. The throw is not in time. Duffy was a little bit late getting to the bag. If he gets to that bag early, I think they got a shot at throwing out Hernandez. The throw was there. The player wasn't there. Teoscar is going to take advantage of Snell giving him one look. Gets the good jump. A heck of a throw from Zanino. There's the ball, but Duffy's not there. If he is on the bag, he's out. He's got to catch it behind the bag, and that's just enough room to give Teoscar the stolen base. Zanino's got a terrific arm. He's thrown very well. Throwing out almost 36% of the base stealers, but for Hernandez, that's his sixth stolen base of the season. Moke hits it in the air. G Man Choi going after it in foul territory, and he just can't get there. And you can see he is laboring, running. He fouled that ball off his foot on Wednesday, and that was a difficult test for him. This is exactly why he's in the lineup to get in that bat, maybe two, but I would. Kevin Cash says I want to see him run around in the field and watch as he goes after it when he reaches for it and the ball drops watch him hop just a little bit just to take a little pressure off that leg. Looks like it might still be bothering him just a little bit. Now the smoke is behind 0 and 2. Now is this one off. The Rays have had a lot of players injured by fouling balls off their foot or their shin. Brandon Lau who is not in the lineup today. Missed 68 games fouling a ball off. Eric Sogard fouled the ball off his shin against the Blue Jays. He's not played since. Kevin Andy. Cash has some thoughts about that. Yandy Diaz also. Joy who we were just talking about. He thinks it goes back to the baseball that it's so hard. Now Kevin Cash was talking to Pat and I in the dugout today. He says, can you believe the way these guys are fouling balls off and they're missing so much time? But he thinks it has to do with the ball and how hard it is. Andy Diaz has missed a lot of time with a fractured foot. But it's all around baseball. A lot of guys have foul balls off their shin and they miss not days but weeks.
Ball in the dirt and Vizio takes off for second. Boy, he's a good base runner. Absolutely terrific instincts for Cameron Vizio. That ball was in the dirt. And he was on the move before he really identified where the ball would end up just because it was in the dirt. You know, he never hesitated. Watch him at first base. You can see the flight of the baseball when you're at first base. He knows that Blake Snell has a good curveball and he might bounce it. Anticipated that ball in the dirt. You can't wait around. You got to think of that play before it happens. And he was off and running. No chance to get him at second. You know, Pat, he took the lead, Vizio, at first base. And watch how he bounces off. And watch how his momentum is going to second. Boom, boom, boom. Never stopped. But that's all about timing. And you learn how to do that by running the bases over and over and over again. And when he hit the ground, that ball hit the dirt. And he was off and running towards second. Two balls, two strikes, two in scoring position for Justin Smoke. Upstairs, full count. Bravic Valera on deck. He's playing at third base this afternoon. Hernandez singled, as did Biggio. The Oscar stole third. Biggio went to second on the wild pitch. Smoke batting with a full count and two outs. Drive left field. Fam's not going to get it. Up against and over the fence in left field. So Justin Smoke drives in the first two runs on what might be his last game as a member of the Blue Jays. Terrific at bat for Smoke. Worked that count after he fell behind. Back to a three count, three ball, two strike count. Got the fastball he was looking for. He hadn't had a lot of success. Just three hits in his career versus. Blake Snell, but he got the fastball he wanted. And how important is that play now by Biggio? It gives the Blue Jays another run. Four seam fastball, and Smokey puts a good swing on it, lines it on the one hop over the wall in left field. It'll go as a ground rule double. Two RBIs instead of one because Biggio got himself in scoring position on that wild pitch. And on the ground ball, ground rule double, he would have been stopped at third, but Smoke had a terrific at bat. Hernandez jogs in, and Biggio will score from second as Smoke picks up two RBIs. That will give him 60 on the season with his 15th double. Well, Kyle Snyder out to talk to you. Zanino, the catcher, and Snell, the pitcher. Jeff Nelson is the crew chief behind the plate trying to speed things up here. You know they're, they they want to get Snell some work try to get his timing and rhythm at the plate his last outing he lasted an inning and two thirds. That was against Boston but it took him 52 pitches to get through that. I mean that's the last thing that comes right when you have surgery you get the touch and you feel of your breaking ball. Command is going to be the last thing he's thrown 22 pitches in this inning. Ray Vic Valera is a switch hitter. Takes one in the side. Valera was acquired off the waiver wire from the Yankees. See his numbers just 16 games combined with New York and Toronto. Ball is pulled foul. The Blue Jays scored three runs on four hits in the first inning yesterday, and they've already jumped on Snell for two here in the first. Austin Pruitt already loosening up for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, as we mentioned, will fly to you. The Bay Area in California and get ready for the Wednesday game. They will not work out tomorrow. They'll work out Tuesday afternoon at 3 local time in Oakland. But they've got roster issues to deal with and try to figure out how many pitchers they're going to put on that wild card roster, who the extra players are going to be. Two and one to Valera. Lays off. Three and one. Is Blake Snell one of those guys going to be on that roster? It's only one game. It's a do or die game, and you're playing on the road. 
Lots of decisions that need to be made. There are 39 players on the roster. Kevin Cash knows he can only have 25 of those players, but he knows he doesn't need a full complement of pitchers in a one and done situation. Three and one, there's a strike, it's a full count. Richard Arena continues to fill in at shortstop. Well, Bichette's season has come to an end as a result of that concussion he suffered in Baltimore. Three and two, two outs. Smoke at second. Cut on and Miss Valera strikes out, but the Blue Jays break out on top. Justin Smoke with a two run double, his 15th double of the season, gives the Blue Jays an early lead. Side request, he was signing them for his own teammates who wanted a memento of their time with the very popular all-star first baseman. One of those teammates was Trent Thornton. Now we all know about Thornton's friendships with the veteran pitchers, but I asked him why a veteran position player was so important to him. Thornton told me Smoke was someone any one of the young players could go to for just about anything. He'd always tell it straight to us. Thornton told me we always appreciated that. I asked Smoke why his teammates were asking him to sign all these very Various things, and in true smoke fashion, he said, "Heck if I know." <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> and that is exactly Justin Smoke's personality. He's pretty laid back. Clay Buckholz pitching with a two-nothing lead throws a first pitch strength to Kevin Kiermaier. Kiermaier batting 229 for the season. Right two right on the corner. Kiermaier is the only active player on the roster that was active for the 2013 wildcard game. He did not play in the regular season that year but Joe Madden activated him because of his defensive skills. There are only 10 players on this 39 man roster that have postseason experience so this is new for a lot of them. And certainly Kiermaier is a key member of this team. What he does in the field, you don't even concern yourself with what he does at the plate. 14 defensive runs saved this season, most among American League center fielders. And the American League is blessed with a lot of great center fielders. Jackie Bradley, Mike Trout, Kevin Kiermaier. I mean, tremendous defensive center fielders. Kiermaier has the most defensive run save this year. Inside two and two. Nearly an extra base hit, but foul. Kiermaier just slapped it down the third baseline, but it sliced foul. Anytime he hits the ball into the outfield, I think it's a double or a chance for an extra base hit. The way he can run. Swung on and miss. Kiermaier strikes out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Big day in baseball today. Well, thank you very much Jamie and obviously all of these games across the board from coast to coast all starting at three Eastern time. So nobody has an advantage of knowing what somebody's doing on the West Coast before you start your game on the before you finish your game on the East Coast. So everybody starts at the same time. If you're Milwaukee how do you get up off the canvas after last night's game in Colorado. That ball is deflected off the glove of the pitcher and it's going to be an infield hit for Daniel Robertson. Yeah terrific. Gut wrenching loss for the Brewers last night. Golden opportunity to tie the Cardinals in the central. And they were one out away. 
from winning that game a home run sent it to extra innings and they lost that game so they are still a game behind the Cardinals in the central. They need to win Cardinals need to lose to force a playoff. You know what's ironic about that is the real strength of the Brewers in September has been their bullpen mm -hmm. and their bullpen gave up six runs. On Friday night and they gave up a run in the eighth ninth and tenth. Last night to lose it. Robertson at first with an infield single. Matt Duffy hit his first home run of the season yesterday in the seventh inning off Sam Govillo. Duffy was talking about having to go to the plate early in that ball game, looking up the scoreboard, and it reminded him he was the only guy, the longest hitter in the majors without a home run at that point and his teammates certainly celebrated along with him once he got back to the dugout. Got a mini hitting streak going seven gamer. There were a few guys at the start of this series who hadn't hit a home run this season some long droughts Billy Hamilton had gone 311 at bats Lewis Brinson John Jay and then there was Matt Nuffy. 141 at bats without a home run. Well, he can get off of that list finally. Yeah, especially in 2019 when everybody is hitting home runs. And he didn't have one. Well, he's got one now. Been battling some injuries the last few seasons that has cut into his playing time in his at bats. Marcos gets that fastball in a good spot. That's three strikeouts for Clay. Tap into savings during Home Hardware's kitchen and bath sale. On now until October 16th. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Final day of the baseball season here at Rogers Center, and we'll be joined by the president of the Toronto Blue Jays, Mark Shapiro, in the third inning. So make sure you stay tuned for that. He'll give us his thoughts about the 2019 season and what to expect in 2020 looking forward. Mike Zanino, the catcher. He's got nine home runs hitting just 168. Zanino grew up in South Central Florida near Fort Myers in Cape Coral went to University of Florida played his college baseball there in Gainesville. So he is basically back home playing in Tampa Bay. It's this one hard but foul. Watch out. Zanino's had two hits in his career against Clay Buckholtz. Both of them have been home runs. That is a line drive. That ball boy doing his best to protect the fans down there. Just got up but couldn't make the play. Zanino was acquired in a trade with Seattle November 8th. Last off season. He had spent his entire career with Seattle. Six seasons out there with the Mariners. He's had a couple of 20 home run seasons. Actually had three 20 home run seasons. He had a 20 homer season 22 and 25 25 his career high in 2017. Got three and two. Running first base is Robertson. Daniel Robertson, the second baseman, will be off on the pitch. Number nine hitter Willie Adamas, the shortstop, is on deck if Zanino can keep the inning going. There goes Robertson fouled straight back and he'll go back to first base. Zanino 
took Buckholz deep on the sixth of this month down in Tampa. If you remember that game, two run home run in the second inning. Play hung him a breaking ball and he hit it to left field, trying to finish him off again here in the second. Buckholz with three strikeouts here in the second inning, four in the ball game, and the Blue Jays have a two nothing lead as they're set to bat in the bottom of the second. As Monty introduced, now Montoyo played uh, percussion, the bongos in front of friends, family, fans, and President Mark Shapiro, who was in the audience lending his support. Montoyo, I'm told, entertained for well over an hour, and Buck, it was a wonderful way to put a bow on his first season as big league manager. Yeah. Uh, it's a great way for Charlie to end up and certainly get that first season under your belt. Gives you, you know what, we talk about players and what they learned in their first season. Managers learn a lot too. You learn your staff, you learn your players, you learn your front office, the relationship you have with the front office and what you have to do to make better decisions, make more timely decisions, and it's a good season for Charlie Montoya as well. And I think the biggest take away from his season will be the fact he got to see a lot of his young players play significant games and that's going to be valuable going forward. Richard Arania hits one in the air. Kiermaier's on the run. He lays out and it's a terrific catch. Well, I told you Kevin Kiermaier one of the best in the business and right there he robbed Richard Arania of two maybe three bases. He was playing in right center field because they didn't think he was going to pull Blake Snell early in the count but he just outran that baseball again. Well, you can see him right by that TD sign in center field. Watch the jump he gets on and then the afterburners he has to go and get that ball and take it right before it hits the ground. Defensive run saved. 14 more this year the most since 2015 when he started winning all that hardware. Two time gold glover he is a platinum glove winner as well as the best defender in any position in the American League. Terrific play to start the inning. Defense can change the complexion of a game day in and day out. And that's a great example of it. If Arena gets on, he's going to have a double, at least maybe a triple. And then it's just a situation where the inning is totally changed. We have seen that firsthand with the Blue Jays this season. They have not had a good year in the outfield, and it really puts pressure on the pitchers. Jonathan Davis the other day took away it looked like a double as another center fielder who could run and go get it that changed the complexion of that inning. Puts the pitcher into the stretch position now he's thinking about giving up a run. The game is played in the middle of the diamond so you have to be strong up the middle. Tampa Boy, isn't that the truth you described it perfectly pitcher catcher shortstop second baseman and center fielder you better be strong up the middle. And that's been the case since the game was invented. Davis fouls it back. It's one and two. You know, you just can't have any shortcuts. Baseball is about recording outs, preventing runs, and you do that with pitching and defense. What other sport starts with the ball on the defense? None. <laughs> so you better be good defensively, and that means pitching. Pitching. Being able to catch the ball, play good fundamental baseball. There have been teams over the years, I mean over the years, that didn't have great offensive teams, but they can pitch it and catch it. And they said, I'll figure out how I'll score some runs. And they were great winning teams, World Series winning teams. Baltimore Orioles come to mind. They always had great pitching. They always had terrific defense. I mean, they had Cole Glovers all around the diamond. Brooks Robinson, Mark Belanger, Davey Johnson, Boog Powell, Paul Blair in center, Frank Robinson in right, and Don Buford in left. Terrific defenders. Two and two, another foul. This one's into the seats. The 69 Mets come to my mind 50 years ago. That's where it first hit me, where I said, wow, if you can pitch it and catch it, your manager will figure out ways to score you some runs. Cleon Jones, Tommy Agee. And Ron Sobota in the outfield. And Crane pull it first. Randy Hundley behind the plate, terrific catcher. Lord Harrelson. 
Oh, some guy named Nolan Ryan on the mound and Tom Seaver. And it makes your pitching staff better. <laughs> Jerry Kuzman. I mean, the the list goes on and on. If you can pitch it and catch it, you got a chance of winning. Here's the three two. Ball four. So Jonathan Davis draws a one out walk. That's the first walk of the bowl game. Final day of the season and the ball boy flips a baseball to that youngster and look at the excitement on his face. He's got his glove and now he's got a great souvenir in the final Sunday of the regular season here at Rogers Center. Jonathan Davis with a lead at first. He can run. Zanino can throw. We mentioned Mike Zanino the catcher's got a strong arm. He's thrown out 36 percent of the base stealers this season. Pitcher's going to have to give him some help and Snell is not really known to have a great move for a left hander over to first base. He can be slow to home. Davis was thinking about moving. He took a step towards second but had to get back. Yeah, Snell doesn't have a terrific pickoff move. Jonathan Davis was going on that one and Blake Snell alertly threw over to first base. That's okay. just an average move. Luke Mele is the batter. Uh, delivers a first pitch strike. Maley's missed a lot of time. He had an oblique injury. Occurred taking batting practice here at Rogers Center. He was out from the end of July till the first of September. Just a long stint. Took a long time for that oblique to heal. And there's nothing you can do. You can't do any work on it to help it heal any quicker. You just had to wait until that thing got better. There goes Davis. The throw from Zanino is right on the money, but somehow Davis is in there safe. What a terrific throw by the catcher. I mean, he put it right on top of the bag, and he can't believe the base runner is safe. He's looking into the dugout. I'm sure Tampa Bay is going to have a look at this. And he did it quickly, too. Goes on the first movement. Zanino right on the bag. But there's Laz Diaz, the umpire, right on top of that play. The tag looked like it was missed on that front arm. Yep, they went for the hand with the mitten on it and missed. You can see he's safe. Good call by Laz Diaz, the second base umpire. So the stolen base for Davis is his third of the season. Outside. Two balls in his time. Blue Jays have a 2 nothing lead. Justin Smoke with a two run double in the first inning. Two and two now. Two and two, one up. Strike three, swing and a miss. Maley is up, two away. Now a message from Expedia. From the cities to the mountains, rivers, and lakes, get the best out of Canada with Expedia. Blake Snow with a strike at second out of the inning. Now we turn the lineup back over. Oscar Hernandez had a single in the first, stole a base, and scored the first run of this ball game. Breaking ball smothered by Zanino, the catcher. 
for Hernandez. That was his first hit against Blake Snell. He came into this game 0 for 7 against the lefty. He's also had a stolen base and a run scored. He's trying to win the series against Tampa Bay. They have not had any luck against Tampa this year. They have not played well. 4 and 14 for the season. It's not quite like the dominance Cleveland has had over the Tigers or Oakland over the Mariners. Both of those teams winning 18 games. Cleveland beat Detroit 18 to 1. Same for Oakland over Seattle. And how many times did that happen in history? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> this year, first time. First time ever. In the divisional era. Take a wag us back, Rowdy Telez. A couple of the youngsters had a good opportunity to get experience and long playing time this season. 3 0 to Hernandez, and there's a strike. Blue Jays with the second youngest team in baseball this year, and they had some growing pains, no question about it. Rowdy Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette. Oh, with a great opportunity to play. Check swing foul out of play. Good to see Bo smiling again. He is back to being himself. It took him a while to get over the symptoms of that concussion. And he told me he was just out of energy. He said, I've always been a high energy guy. And he said, I just didn't want to do anything. Just and he tired. got hit by a pitch in Baltimore. That he was just tired all the time those first couple of days after he got hit. 3 2. Fouled straight back. Bo has been closely monitored by the training staff. The head trainer, Nikki Huffman, making sure that they get him out there, move him around, get his heart rate up to. Trying to replicate game action, and then they check to see how the symptoms are, and he's been asymptomatic since about Wednesday. No dizziness, no upset stomach. Can do baseball drills. So he'll have a winter now to get himself ready for next season. He's looking forward to that. He's got a lot on his mind that he wants to accomplish in this game. Another 3 2 pitch outside. Hernandez takes another walk. And his 45 walks for Teoscar. He continues to extend his career high in that department as well. Blake Snell, as Pat mentioned, had a foot injury earlier in the season and he had orthoscopic surgery to remove some loose bodies in his pitching elbow. Last season, he was the American League Cy Young Award winner with terrific numbers. It's a different story for him this year. Yeah, battling the injuries. He's made 22 starts this year for this team, but he just hasn't been the same. A couple of rehab starts down in AAA before he tried to trying to get built back up for the playoffs. Two times on the injured list. I mean, anytime you start and then stop and then start up again and then stop, it's, it's tough to get built back up to get that competitive edge and he just he doesn't look as sharp as we've seen him. He's thrown 52 pitches now to get five outs. Austin Bird was up earlier in this game. He is back up again now. Kevin Biggio with a single to center field his first time up. He scored the second Blue Jay run. With that base hit he extends his Streak to 29 straight games reaching base. He'll carry that into next season. His father Craig had a 41 game streak during his playing day, so he's got a ways to go to catch his dad. But it will carry over, right? Yes, sir. A 1 1. Everybody wants to finish up strong and Kevin with that base hit his season average at 237 but he's hit over 300 in the month of September. So that way you can close the book on a season on a real high note. He's playing in his 100th game today. Mm -hmm. 
think about it, he has played 100 games. Bo Bichette's played 46. Vladi Guerrero has played 123 games. So they'll all go into spring training knowing full well what's ahead during a regular big league season. Vladi has talked about how much he's looking forward to the offseason and getting prepared to come to camp in the best shape of his life. They can train now in the winter time, knowing what to expect. Playing six months of competitive baseball. I mean, the best there is in the world, competitive baseball for six months. So you can train yourself. You can eat better. That's one thing that Bo talked about, and he was really interesting talking about his diet and what he eats and how he takes care of himself in the offseason. Really impressive. 2-2 pitch. Fouled off the catcher's mitt. Zanino couldn't hold on. Yeah, he went. That means more fruits and vegetables. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the nourishment from the fruits and vegetables, too. Now, he is a terrific young man and going to be a very, very good player for a long time. Bottom of the second inning. The Jays have a 2 0 lead. And on and missed. Bisho strikes out. When we come back, we'll be joined by the president and CEO of the Toronto Blue Jays, Mark Shapiro, to give us his thoughts on the. Good to be with you guys. Obviously, final day of the season, Blue Jays, there have been so many ups and so many downs, and the record you have to discount, I would imagine, from your perspective, but you had 22 rookies play for you this year. That must be encouraging as you look forward to the future. As long as they're good rookies, it's encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie alone doesn't make it good, but no, I guess when I, when I do reflect, I'm not. I don't feel like it's a 65 win team. I feel like it's a team that over the last 50, 60 games has competed, even moved and competed to winning over the last 40 against one of the toughest records in the game. Transitioned a ton of talent, had a new coaching staff that's made an impact uh, with some coaches that have been here for a long time and helping develop our players um, and set a tone for the way we go about our business. Um, treat each other as teammates, prepare and play the game. So a lot, a lot has happened this year, and those are the building blocks of building a foundation of what you hope is a championship future. Let's go back to the first day of spring training this year. Okay. We're getting ready to go to spring training. You have these expectations. We're now the last day of the regular season. What's been fulfilled, and what do you think you need to work on? What have you learned this year? going into next year. Yeah, I mean, I think what's been fulfilled, we've obviously transitioned a, a ton of talent up here and set a tone for the way we go about our business, the kind of team we are, both in the clubhouse, behind the scenes, you know, the way guys treat each other, the way they treat people when they come into the stadium, our fans, um, and the way they treat, uh, you know, just support staff and go about their business in preparation and practicing every single day. Um, as well as uh, you know the, the, the talent on the field, I I'm not sure I remember at one period of time this many young players coming up, four or five guys under 23 years old, and all transitioning and all actually not just you know just you guys know just how hard it is. It's you know it's hard to hold your own up here. It's hard to survive with the anxiety and pressures that come with it. Uh, and expectations once you get up here and these guys have actually played well we've been better since they've been here has anybody surprised you this year better sure. than your expectations I mean probably a guy like Jacob Wagaspeck isn't a guy that you know we had a 5 year RA at AAA it's hard to say yeah. he didn't surprise yeah. me he's he's competed up here and shown signs that he could be a a part of the a part of the future going forward certainly not going to be a guy that carries a rotation but you know I think he could be a, a guy Trent Thornton uh, from a perspective of generating swing and miss that gives you a chance you know always is he's had a you know what I think is a very good rookie season starting pitching just takes so long it is so difficult to be patient but you've got to be patient and you're usually rewarded if you believe in the talent and having that swing and miss ability uh, that he's got and the pitch repertoire he's got if he can stay healthy um, you know I think that there's a, a good future for him as well so those two guys surprised me Reese McGuire certainly too short a time up here to call that a surprise, but really encouraging and positive to think about he and Danny Jansen, what they could mean together for our future moving forward. Yeah, they're both really good, and they're both 24 years old. Johnny Davis is in as a pinch runner. 
Mark, you mentioned health, and you've used 37 pitchers this season. Yep. I would think that would be a concern, and a lot of them had different issues over the course of this season. How do you address that in the offseason? How do you prepare this team for spring training going forward? Well, I think the numbers are a byproduct of both veterans that were here that were you know that got injured and and uh, maybe the type of veteran we either had to sign through free agency or the guys that have been here that had some recurring injury histories and then just trying to make sure we kept guys healthy buck so we were changing guys frequently to ensure the workloads didn't get to the point that they were at danger points F injuries happen when guys are fatigued that's a hundred percent you know there's ev every evidence of that so we were doing everything we could to no one's going to have a play on that one. We were doing everything we could to try to make sure that we kept guys healthy, and that that caused us to, to generate even more change than you might normally have. But clearly, we've got to get, you know, we, we would, in a perfect world, we'd get five starters who could all log, you know, 160 to 200 innings, and, you know, we build out a deep bullpen. We're not going to just jump from here to there, uh, but moving towards that, taking steps towards that next year would be important for us. You're in a difficult division, obviously, and we've seen Tampa Bay celebrate. They're going to the wild card division. Yeah. How do you close the gap between yourselves, the Yankees, Boston, and Tampa Bay now? What are the next steps for this organization? Some of it's just natural progress off of where we are. I, you know, I think, obviously, uh, Boston's got some similar challenges to we had maybe in 16. Um, they're in kind of a tough spot. They do have extreme resources. The Rays are one of, the, if not the best run, you know, franchise in Major League Baseball, but it's hard to see them stepping up above where they've been the last six years, which means some good years, some bad years, but taking that step to kind of get over the top is it going to be a challenge for them. The behemoth at the top of the division, uh, the Yankees, they've got everything going for them. Young talent, they've got resources in the biggest market in Major League Baseball. So um, I don't think you just jump and make that jump in one year. You just focus on yourselves, keep getting better. If that happens, I think we could surprise some people, you know, and if the pace things happen. But I want to get to the point that we start worrying about how do we get past the New York Yankees. We're probably a couple steps before that's really the conversation we're having. We just need to focus on the Toronto Blue Jays right now. Mark, you, you mentioned starting pitching and, and how it takes so much time for starting pitching to get acclimated. Yeah. Does that mean or could that mean your young starters in the minor leagues they're going to learn up here next year. And I think some of our some more of our young stars are going to get exposed up here next year and certainly you know go through that that step of transition to the major leagues which means they will learn up here they're not going to come up here and instantly be great major league starting pitchers. I think it means we're going to you know we're going to look to supplement and bring in some guys some experienced guys as well when that opportunity presents itself. Um, but and there are some things that that have transpired in the modern game that you know, maybe I wasn't a part of when I first was a general manager in, in the early 2000s and the way pitchers are used and the way information is okay. used within a game. Could that mean T.J. Zoy, Anthony Kay, Nate Pearson, those guys are going to be in the big leagues learning their craft next year. I think at any point in time it would be surprising not to see one or two of those guys in the big leagues. To see us roll out a rotation of all of those guys is not impossible, but probably somewhat unlikely. We're going to look to to add a veteran or two along the way at least. You know, and Ross, does Ross and the baseball operations staff prepare the off season, which is kind of a step of going through three sets of meetings with our own coaching staff and scouts and looking at what the alternatives are through trades and free agency and kind of charting an off-season plan by the end of October. Um, you know, they'll look at our our internal guys, Tabby, and they'll mm -hmm. say, is this the right guy to give the innings to or do we need to maybe have that guy be a guy that comes up sometime in May, June, or July and, and fills in? The, the future certainly looks bright with some of the young pitchers that you have down at the minor leagues. It's encouraging. I think the numbers, you know, work in our favor. They're a little bit out of line with the position players that are here, but that's a good thing because if we can get rolling built around the position players we've got and maybe add a few external guys then we know that guys that like Manoa and Klofenstein who are a few years away are going to join the Pearsons and Kays uh, Woods Richardsons of the world that are a little further along and we start to say yeah that, those are the numbers you need with pitching. I, I had a you know a veteran scout once told me pitching is a game of attrition 
you know, and it really is true because so many guys get hurt, so many guys go through ups and downs. So numbers when it comes to pitching is just so important. We can't just bank on one or two guys. Nate Pearson, clearly one of the best pitching prospects in all of minor league baseball, but we need we need more than just Nate. Mark, can you stick around another half inning I with us? I certainly this? can. All right. Thank you very much. Quick inning for Clay Buckholz, pinch runner. Johnny Davis forgot to tag second. He was doubled off. And the Blue Jays players, coaches, and manager all come out onto the field to acknowledge the fans to say thank you for supporting us through this season. And it's a good moment. Good to see all the young players out there acknowledging the fan base. The Blue Jays certainly have a very loyal fan base. And as we had the last half inning, we are joined by the president and CEO. Mark Shapiro and, and Mark there's so many good things going on we've talked about the position players defense is an area where you certainly, certainly need to is. in outfield obviously we have talked about it time and time again there have been many misplays in the outfield how do you address that can you just address it internally or do you have to address it going well, outside I, the organization I always like coming on with you guys because you know I'm not coming on with someone who's just watching the game kind of the guys <laughs> who have played the game and I always and I you know Tabby knows because he's worked in a development setting with me I go back to watching so many great defenders guys that became among the best in the game break in and just have terrible rookie seasons you can go back and look through the charts it, I think the pace of a game and how hard balls are hit and defense at the major league level is a one of the hardest jumps from AAA. Besides the pressure and anxiety that comes with that jump of the third deck and what that means, <clears throat> I think it doesn't get talked about very often. Uh, and when you're breaking in so many players at once, you're not just looking at one guy struggling with defense, but you're looking at a group of guys struggling with defense. Once that sets in, that does then transition to the mental side of the game and the anxiety that comes with it. So we've seen that become, I, I believe, a bigger problem than it is this year. Not to say we can just let it play out, you know, but I do think development time adjustment and transition at this level, along with work, and I'm not sure anybody's going to outwork Mark Budzinski with our outfielders, uh, will help us get better defensively I really believe that I've seen that so many times I'm sure you guys can think back to players you've played with as well and seen that transition defensively and seen how much better guys get over time when you look at your makeup of your outfit what are some of the skills that you see in this group that are encouraging to you that you might have the players in-house certainly power you know we've got but I mean that's in, in the game today power is is uh, Everybody's you know, got power. It's so different yeah. <laughs> but Grich Grich and Teoscar both those guys um, have got all the tools I mean they can run um, they both can throw they both have power both guys if they can improve their plate discipline just a little bit would be offensive monsters they're good players now they could be offensive monsters with just a little bit of a two strike approach or a little bit of a you know cutting down their swing with two strikes again you could say that for the bulk of the game right now uh, defensively is the area you know Gritch is already a good defender certainly on the corner playable in center you know, Teoscar clearly has to get better defensively, and, and we have to figure out center field a little bit as well. And Guriel, we're not talking about him because he had an appendectomy, but Guriel's a guy that, you know, for an athlete that we threw out into the outfield, and even though we signed him, we kind of said he may end up being an outfielder. He looked like an athlete, you know, running in the outfield. I think that, he, you know, his instincts, his routes and jumps were actually pretty good has a chance to just keep getting better and he could be an above average outfielder. Why why do you think just a position change for Guriel from second to the outfield turned him into an elite player. I don't know you know in my experience it just could be the anxiety of playing in the infield got to be you know a big a distraction for him something mm -hmm. that kind of overwhelmed him whether he was in the dugout about to hit or you know uh, in the infield preparing for pitch to pitch. He is not a prototypical infielder, long levers, you know, maybe more of a potential shortstop. When you start to look at him at second base, there are a few guys, but not many guys that look like that. Even third base, the long time to kind of get rid of the ball and a lot to move around. So he runs like an outfielder, you know, he kind of moves like an outfielder and he's clearly comfortable out there and enables him to kind of be free, um, be loose and be athletic. And I think he thrived in that, which was great. Brendan McKay is the new pitcher as Blake Snell is out of the game. You saw there were some defensive changes as well. Willie Thomas is out of the game. Robertson's playing short. Johnny Davis, the pinch runner, is in center. And Mike Brasso is at second base. 
And Rowdy Telez is the batter. He hits that ball into the outfield. And Mark, you have been building up your analytics department. Your defensive shifts have been very productive this season. What do some of the analytics tell you about what you need to do as a hitting team? Your on-base percentage as a team needs to improve. Your chase percentages need to improve. Are there things there that you're learning about your players that you can teach that they can improve in those areas? I mean, I do. I think for every player, it's different. You know, it's not. I think the one thing that's maybe universal, again, not just for us in the game today, but we clearly need to put the ball in play a little more often. The good things happen when you put the ball in play. If you don't get the ball in play, you have no chance for a good thing happening, regardless of whether the other team has a misplay or, you know, you beat the shift. I, uh, I mean, I go back to a moment the other night. I've, there's been a lot of conversation about the shift at the league level when I, with committees I'm on. Um, and there is a, a there is some sentiment to kind of create rules uh, to ban or legislate against the shift. I am not a believer in that. I think what you need to do is what Kevin Biggio did. And mm -hmm. those hits are out there for guys. Uh, Smoke hits one down the right field line. Garcia right up against the fence makes the catch. Uh, Mark, you certainly covered a lot of areas. We certainly appreciate it's your my time. Pleasure. I'll look forward to seeing you guys under sunny, warm skies. Absolutely. I appreciate your guys' passion for the game Thank and for so the Blue Jays. All Thank right. You. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate it. Mark Shapiro, the president and CEO of the Blue Jays. Roger Center, man. How much by the fans? Way to go, fellas. It's always one of the real challenges for a grounds crew all season long, especially with all of the work it takes to maintain an artificial surface. He-Man Choi hits one a ton, and I think he's okay. G-Man Choi has a double and now a home run in his two plate appearances, and that's going to be it probably for him. And he is very gingerly walking around the bases. He has an injured foot. You can see he's really kind of just taking his time, and is not intentionally. He's dealing with an injury. So I'm sure Kevin Castro will take him out of the game after two at-bats and a Good day. A double and a home run. Yeah, he, His 19th homer of the season. He doesn't have to run hard on that one. That was a no doubt about it. He doubled over the head of Teoscar Hernandez his first time up. Now gets this sinker that stays out over the plate. And he hits his 19th home run. They wanted to get a couple of at-bats, see if his timing was okay after a few days down. It looks okay to me. Yeah, and you know what? He may be destined for a pinch hitting role in that wild card game. And if that's the case it looks like he is ready to contribute. I don't know whether or not they would play him at first base not being 100 percent. So it's a 2 1 ball game. And a lot of these players will. Have an opportunity to play in the postseason for the first time. I would say you guys see him. We spoke to Kevin Cash about his games against Oakland and Oakland won the season series four games to three but Kevin said at that time we had a couple of blown games late in the game and we actually played pretty well against Oakland so he's pretty optimistic about their chances against the A's. Both of those games were late. Both of them were in Oakland. There's a hanging breaking ball into left field and that gets past the Oscar Hernandez. It's going to go all the way to the scoreboard as Garcia will just jog into second and I'm not sure if he's 100 percent or not but it looked like he had a chance to go to third but they play it back in so home run and a double here in the fourth a couple of balls that were up and they were hit hard one by Choi and now by Garcia hanging breaking ball they Oscar can't get to this one nor can he knock it down and hold him to a single as Garcia will end up at second base with another extra base hit. Kevin Kiermaier is out of the game as Brasso came in to play second base. And Brasso is playing second. Johnny Davis is playing in center in place of Kiermaier. Yeah, the whole idea I think for Kevin Cash today is I'll start my regulars. I'll get them to at bats. I'll get them out of there. Keep their timing. Keep their competitive edge. They're going to have a couple of days off before they play again in Oakland. 
And the last thing he needs is another injury to one of his frontline players. I'm talking with Matt Kataro, the bench coach, and he'll make some more changes, trying to get everybody as many opportunities as possible here. G Man Choi, not sure if he's going to stay in the game or not. Mike Brasso playing at second base. He came up and did a nice job early in the season. He hit 271 for them, six homers, 16 RBIs. Not bad for a player who wasn't even drafted. He just signed and said, give me a chance to play some professional baseball. He made his way up through the ranks of the Tampa Bay system. Came up to the big leagues. He can hit. Got a nice swing. Bouncing ball toward third. Well, there it makes a nice play barehanded and throws Brasso out. So it was into the baseline, but Smoke was there to make the grab. Brasso's retired. It's the first out of the inning. Good play at third base by Valera. Boy, what a nice play. You got to make a decision. Do I have time to glove it and transfer it to my other hand, or should I barehand it? I think he got lucky because that ball bounced up. Right about Bill Ty, who was able to grab that ball and fire over to first base just in time. So here's Daniel Robertson. He started the game at second base. He has since moved to shortstop. When Davis pinch ran for Willie Adamas, the shortstop. One out. Tampa Bay with a run on four hits. Abu Jays. Two runs on three hits. There's a good sinker, good movement down and in. It was good to hear from Mark Shapiro, the president and CEO of the Blue Jays, about this team going forward. He said they'd like to bring in some experienced pitching. You see G Man Choi's day has come to an end as he will take the rest of this game off. Still walking down the steps very gingerly. <laughs> Ground ball. The rain near the shortstop has it through in the dirt but smoke as he's always done picks it cleanly. Nice play on both ends of the baseball there. Valera, the third baseman, was not going to get that roller from Robertson. So it's Urania, picks it, and then Smoke on the other end. How many times have we seen Smokey do this? Pick a ball and save his infielders an error. One of the best play. in the game. He can really pick those low throws out of the dirt. Urania's got a strong arm, but that time he one hopped the first baseman. Yeah, that's Matt Duffy, the third baseman, struck out in the second. One of four strikeouts so far for Clay Buckholtz. Yeah, you were mentioning Mark Shapiro and having a chance to talk to him. Found it interesting his take on young pitchers, that it takes time for them to get up here, understand what they have to do, how to get better, how to succeed. And some do it, some don't. Yeah, and and I thought it was interesting too. He mentioned a senior scout that he had talked to about the attrition rate of starting pitchers. How you have to have, you know, eight, ten, twelve major league ready starting pitchers. You'd like to have five in the big leagues and five in AAA that are knocking on the door. T.J. Zoik threw a no hitter this year in Buffalo. Nate Pearson's name came up. Obviously, Pearson will come to spring training next year, and it'll be interesting to see how much he progresses and where he stands as far as whether or not he can make the club out of spring training. They could all make the club out of spring training but you got to figure there's going to be a learning curve there at some point. Well and that's why too you know the clock has already started to tick on Guerrero Bichette Hibizio Jansen McGuire all those rookies and the clock is ticking now so you have to make sure you don't waste too many of those years on those five six years that you have control over these players. So you get the pitching up here and let them all grow together. So I think the most important thing the Blue Jays do is find a rotation in some rotation depth in case 
what happened this year happens next year. The injuries. Yeah. So many injuries this year to their pitchers. Right. And really coming into spring training, Clay Buckles was signed late. Clayton Richard was signed. Thought they were going to have, you know, maybe Buckles and Richard for half season each. This is a long drive down the left side, and that ball is foul. Matt Duffy, who homered yesterday, just missed hitting his second home run of the season. But I think you're right. I think priority number one is adding quality pitching. And and I don't like to say just add depth. I say mm. I want to add some pitchers that can get outs. That's right. Set the tone for these young pitchers like Maruki. Remember, Ryan made 17 starts last year, and everybody anticipated he was going to make 30 starts this year, but that didn't happen because of various arm injuries. So now he is cleared to get into his baseball off season and he should be ready for spring training. But then again, he's not had a full season pitching in big leagues. You, you just don't know with, with the injuries. So you you get pitchers who can get outs. That, that's what that's how you do it. And I get the young guys up here. Get them that experience and you can see. How they got better this year a lot of them. Duffy takes the ball inside. He'll walk. A two out walk. Tap into savings during Home Hardware's kitchen and bath sale. On now until October 16th. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Final day of the regular season. The Blue Jays trying to wrap things up with a win. They have a 2 1 lead over Tampa Bay. We're in the top of the fourth inning. You know, another thought on the starting pitching. Yeah, you can talk all you want to about spending money and going out and signing free agents, but you have to have a free agent that wants to come here. And when you get to free agency, you're going to look to an opportunity to go someplace where you can win, and Blue Jays aren't there yet. So it's going to be a while, and yeah, you might have to end up. Taking and signing some second tier players, maybe making a trade for a more veteran starting pitcher, somebody that can lead the way. And you hope and keep your fingers crossed that Matt Shoemaker can come back and do what he did early in the season last year, but he's coming off a very significant injury. And, you know, he's had a lot of injuries in his career, a terrific leader, a great clubhouse presence, and a pretty good pitcher starting yes. the season on. But no guarantees. None. No guarantees. This is Mike Zanino, the catcher. Buckles struck him out to end the second. Yeah, that'd be great if you could go and trade for a, a number two or a number three starter, but everybody's looking for a two and three starter. They're, they're just none available. In the front line free agents like the Garrett Coles, you know, that'd be nice to open up the vault and, and sign him, but that's not going to happen. No. And Madison Bumgarner, Garrett Cole, those guys are all free agents. This ball is hit to left field, but Hernandez is there. Zanino's read tight. The Rays get on the board. A home run by G-Man Choi, but the Blue Jays have a 2-1 lead. Valera, Arena, and Davis. She said in 2008, she was attached to the Royal Canadian Regiment and deployed to Afghanistan. She is currently employed as the Human Resources Manager at Canadian Forces Recruiting Center. Sergeant Elizabeth Rollinson today, our Sunday salute. Thank you very much for your service. And Trent Thornton does the services as he presents Sergeant Rollinson with her jersey. A terrific tradition here at Rogers Center. Yannick Chirinos will take over. He'll be the third pitcher to work for Tampa Bay here this afternoon. And he is coming back from injury as well, trying to figure out where he stands for the postseason. He's always done well against the Blue Jays. He has started games against them. He has followed openers. He has good numbers against the Jays in his career this season. Just 25 games of 365 earned run average. Jesus Aguilar will take over for G-Man Choi over at first base. So lots of changes going on for both of these teams. Trinas will throw that sinker and that breaking ball a lot. Trinas has made two starts against the Blue Jays this season. Ravik Valera going to end up with a base hit. Good job by Valera. As he bumps one and gets on base, he bunted, got some backspin on it, and it just kind of settled down between the mound and first base. You can't throw it out there any better than this. The infielders are playing deep. Just pop that ball over the head of Chirinos, 
And watch it just harmlessly hit the ground for a point base hit for Valero. A little bit like uh, the Kevin Biggio play the other day where he poked at that ball to get it by the pitcher and then plenty of speed. Guillermo Heredia has taken over in right field for Tampa Bay. Obviously, Garcia is out of the ball game. And there's another but this one's in the air and he drops it the umpire at home Jeff Nelson says it's a catch as Torinos was in a rush to try to get a double play but he was taking the ball out of his glove when he dropped it so Arena will be out on the popped up bun and that would have been a double play if he could have successfully transferred that ball to his glove. Valera at first base is off on the bunt and he's caught in no man land no man's land there's the out right there on the bunt attempt but he drops the ball and cannot finish off the double play Jeff Nelson home plate number never hesitated to call Reina out on the caught bunt Jonathan Davis walked in the second inning. One of two walks by the Blue Jays so far in this game. Jays have a 2 1 lead. <laughs> Ball on a strike to the Blue Jays center fielder. Charlie Morton will start the game on Wednesday in an American League wild card game. He has really had a terrific first season with Tampa Bay. There's a liner in the center that'll get down for a base hit. There it takes a turn around second he'll stop there. Jonathan Davis has been on base both times he's come to the plate with good at bats and he's played some good defense. You know. Take advantage of those opportunities you get in the month of September. Maybe you open up some eyes in that front office. JD with a solid single to center field. That's how you keep your head down. Keep it down on that sinker. Now Davis aboard, Valera at second, one out. Luke Maley, a strikeout and a victim in the second. Pops this one up. It's playable. Jesus Aguilar, the first baseman, infield fly. The ball is foul. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, the Cardinals look like they're wrapping up things and they're going to go ahead and secure that division. Oscar Hernandez has singled and walked. The Cubs and Joe Madden have agreed to go their separate ways. How about that? Kind of interesting, isn't it? Three years after winning a championship, a World Series championship, out. Theo Epstein, a President of the Cubs said that he expects there to be a bidding war for Joe Madden's services. When you think about it, Clint Hurdle was relieved of his duties as the manager after nine seasons in Pittsburgh. Bruce Bochy, this will be his last game of his great managerial career. No, he'll be done. Andy Green of the Padres has already been relieved of his duties as manager. So there are going to be more changes. Gabe Kapler, there's a lot of talk that he's managing his final game. The Yankees owner, John Middleton, said that they will discuss his future this week. And I don't expect them to wait too long to make the announcement one way or another. Ned Yost, he's out in he's, Kansas City. They'll need retired. a new manager. He's retiring, so yep. there's another spot where they will need a, a manager. Lots of changes, but that's the nature of the game anymore, isn't it? Every day there seems to be changes. This game is really the haves and have nots right now. There have been 11 teams that have won 90 or more games and 11 teams that have lost 90 or more games. There's no middle ground. I think that's a real problem in baseball. For the first time in baseball, there are four teams that have won 100 games. 
So that means there are a lot of bad teams. And there's not much middle ground. There are four teams that have lost 100 games as well. Of course, the Tigers have lost 113 games. That's the most losses in the majors. And they have gone through a bunch of tough seasons lately. The haves and the haves nots have nots. I, I agree with you. How do you close that gap? There's a high fly ball to left field, and this one's going to go. Get out of here, boy, and God. Hey, Oscar Hernandez with his 26th home run of the season. Mark Shapiro, when he was with us, talked about the power of Hernandez and Grichik in the outfield, and there is a good example of it right there. Boy, that ball exploded off of his bat. He's liking this leadoff position for the Blue Jays. That's three games in a row that he has led off. He homered in yesterday's game. Check that two days in a row. He's already been on base three times, and that was a no doubt about bomb to left field from Teoscar. Five to one Blue Jays. For Hernandez continues to extend his career high in homers. It's 26 now. This ball was crushed. Go down and get it. And really, the outfielders didn't even move. The Oscar winds up and gets all of that one. Yeah, they've got some power in the outfield with Grichik, 31 home runs, 26 for Hernandez. Guriel is going to have a big, I think, a big year next year now that he has settled in as an outfielder. Three and one to Kevin Biggio. A base hit and a strikeout in his two plate appearances. And a good rip at that pitch and fouls it back. Another foul straight back. Three and two. Blue Jay scored two in the first. They added three more here in the fourth. Oscar Hernandez with a three run home run this inning. He also singled and scored in the first. Yanni Chirinos in relief. He's the third pitcher to work. Blake Snell started. He went two in the third. And Biggio is called out. He can't believe it. He thought it was off the plate inside. The Blue Jays get a home run from Teoscar Hernandez. They take a 5-1 lead as we head to the fifth time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell's driving cares. The final Sunday of the regular season. A lot of activities around the ballpark. It is another Junior Jays Sunday here today. They're having a good old time. And hey, what I saw some video of Calgary earlier today. They got snow in Calgary already. That's why I'm going to Florida. Pat. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I Baseball season's snow. over. <laughs> Evidently, wow. Snow in Calgary. This is Johnny Davis. You see his numbers from AAA, 298 average. He's got some speed. And boy, that's old-fashioned stance. Choking up about four inches on the bat handle, and hits it in the air. Kitchik waits on it, and Davis is retired. Yeah, you'd like to get him to hit down on the ball, right? Get the ball on the ground and use that speed. Anything in the air, you're going to be making a right-hand turn. Yandy Diaz. He's the DH this afternoon. He has lined out twice. He smoked the ball in the first inning right to the third baseman. Belair made the catch and then he lined out to the left fielder. He's 0 for 2.
The Virtual Strike Zone is brought to you by Rogers Ignite Wi-Fi Hub, the power to control your Wi-Fi devices. Clay Buckholtz trying to close out the raise here in the fifth inning. He has held Tampa Bay to a run on four hits. The only run coming on a solo home run by G-Man Choi. And Choi had two of the four hits before he left this ball game. Andy Diaz, the DH today, lined out that ball 107 miles an hour off the bat. Not bad for a guy who's trying to get his timing back. Just activated off the injured list today. He was on the 60 day injured list. Fouled the ball off his left foot. And here he strikes out. Another strikeout for Buckholtz. That'll give him five so far this afternoon. Hey, Buckholtz trying to win today, throw five innings. Get through the fifth inning and then end up winning the ball game. If he does, it would be his 90th career win. Moving the ball around effectively and efficiently this afternoon. The last time out against Baltimore, it looked like he, his back tightened up on him a little bit later on in the end of the third into the fourth inning, and he just couldn't drive through that delivery. And much better today. Tommy Pham has not reached base so far this afternoon. He is 0 for 2. Trying to get aboard, trying to add to those numbers. 0 and 2. Strikes out. Good inning for Clay Buckles. He retires the side in order with a couple of strikeouts. And with the in case ending this congratulations over social media. Congrats on making history. I knew when you took me deep in college, you were special. The last time the two saw each other was in Cleveland when Kay took part in the Futures game and Alonzo faced Vladdy in the All-Star Home Run Derby. Kay told me, I knew Alonzo was special. I saw the power, but having those kind of expectations, that's a little bit crazy. Buck. That was pretty interesting last night, and Alonzo connected for that 53rd home run of the season to set a new rookie home run record. And he was quite emotional when he broke mm -hmm. that record. He actually had tears as he took his defensive positioning after hitting that home run. Got a lot of congratulatory messages there, and Judge reached out to him to congratulate him, and it was Judge's record that he broke. Yeah, and he, then he talked about some of the greats in the game, uh, mentioned Babe Ruth and Ted Williams after the game. Great. Great to tie them all together, I think. The younger players thinking of the history of the great game. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool moment. Randall Grichik he is 0 for 2, and the shift is on once again. Yanni Chorinos in his second inning of relief. Uh, pop up on the infield. Aguilar, the first baseman, makes the catch. One out. Let's check in again with Jamie Campbell. Bochi and Kershaw, they are linked together. Kershaw and Bumgarner. Bumgarner, I think he's got three home runs against, against Kershaw. Kershaw. And of yeah. course he hits a line drive a to the third base. Drive. Of course. But Kershaw pitching against the Dodgers. Final game for Bruce Bochi. Probably the final game for Madison Bumgarner. And there was a chance Bumgarner was going to start that game, but Bochi decided just to use him as a pinch hitter, so he got a chance to be acknowledged by the fans. Boy, you see the crowd? They were into it. He's meant a lot to that organization. A lot. I'd be sad to see him go. Talking about Madison Baumgartner and everything he's done. Probably the best big game pitcher in the playoffs in this generation. 
And Bruce Bochy, too, you can bet the crowd was there to see Bochy and acknowledge his terrific run as the manager of the Giants. 13 years in San Francisco, three pennants, three World Series titles for Bochy. Next stop, Cooperstown for him. Easily. Easily. How about, I don't know about you, but when he left San Diego after the 2006 season, I thought, well, you know, he's probably going to land on his feet somewhere. But he went right the next year to San Francisco and managed ever since. He had some terrific seasons. And I read some stories about him uh, when he first went to San Francisco. Didn't start off too well for him. His career as a manager in San Francisco and he's like boy we made a big mistake why did we leave San Diego <laughs> you know why why did we make that move but it has worked out for him. Well as hits it high into the air in left field Tommy Pham the left fielder is there to make the catch. Tellez is retired two away. Bochi in his first season in San Francisco went 71 and 91 and he only got a game better the next year he went 72 and 90. But then in 2009 started to turn things around they finished third and then in 2010 they would end up as World Series champs and once again Justin Smoke at the plate being acknowledged by this Rogers center crowd hit a home run Justin. Yeah. So you can jog around the bases one more time. That RBI double two RBI double he added the first inning. He now has 320 RBIs as a Blue Jay. Smoke is a free agent after this season and he's playing in his fifth year with the Blue Jays. I mean there always is the possibility he could come back and resign with the Blue Jays. He has expressed his desires that that would be something he would certainly like to do. This time he is called out on strikes and he doesn't like the call from Jeff Nelson. Same reaction we saw from Kevin Biggio to end the last half inning. I was just wondering what the veteran struck out six. He had a nice inning in the fifth three up three down with a couple of strikeouts. He's in line for the win and a nice bounce back start after two rough outings against the Orioles. He'll turn things over to Wilmer Font. Clay at a 2.69 ERA versus the Rays is best versus any club. He keeps that up with five very good innings. Wilmer Font will take over. Wilmer's pitched for Tampa Bay this year. He's also pitched for the Mets in Toronto. He's been used in various degrees as an opener as a middleman. Anthony Offer will take over in right field for Randall Gritchick. Font will take over here in the sixth inning. Hey, Jesus Aguilar took over defensively at first base. This will be his first plate appearance. G-Man Choi started. He doubled in a homer, so Choi finishes up on a positive note. Aguilar. <laughs> Mockingly stared out at <laughs> Wilmer Fun. You can see a little <laughs> smile on his face now. And breaking ball was up and in. The fastball beats him right there. It's one and one. Go back to the first pitch of this at bat as Aguilar facing Wilmer Fun. Watch the reaction of the batter. Hey man. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Don't throw it up there. <laughs> Guys can have fun too. I'm sure they have crossed paths in the somewhere in the minor. You see Aguilar still looking out at him, trying to get a reaction from Font. Both of these players are from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So you can bet they have. Played with each other, played against each other somewhere in the past, and this ball is fouled out of play. Lourdes Guriel Jr. is back on the bench after having his appendix removed. That's a great sight. I'm sure he wanted to finish up in the clubhouse on this final day of the season. Now he will be ready for spring training, and boy, he made a nice transition from second base to left field. 
how does that happen where a player goes from one position to the next looks like a totally different player it, I think it was the pressure of playing second base it just didn't suit him but in the outfield he looks like a different player yeah I mean Mark Shapiro when he was with us in the booth talked about it how he looks like an outfielder and when they originally signed him they thought he might be an outfielder a pretty tall guy to play middle infield he certainly didn't look comfortable at second base and had throwing issues and they took him out of a game after he made consecutive bad throws and went down to triple A Buffalo put him in the outfield and he's a different player. He'll end up with a 277 average 19 doubles 20 homers and 50 RBIs in just 84 games. So he'll be anxious to get back into his baseball routine. There's another young player that's part of the future. So it looks like the Blue Jays have some questions answered left field behind the plate middle infield possibly third base maybe first base Richick is signed for four more seasons after this one <laughs> Hank is like hey give me a fastball one time <laughs> Aguilar strikes out that's three strikeouts in a row for the Blue Jays one down. The way those two interact with each other they must have had a few at bats in their native land Venezuela maybe some winter ball action along the way somewhere. But he was like hey throw me a fastball. <sighs> Throws the breaking ball gets the strikeout look at the two of them after that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're giving each other the gears there. Is Guillermo Heredia is getting his first at bat. He took over defensively. <laughs> He's letting right him field. know. <laughs> Throw me a fastball. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fly ball into the outfield. Anthony Alford is there. He makes the catch two away. It's the confidence we get when we come together for our team. TD, proud fan and official bank of the Toronto Blue Jays. You never know what you can find at the Jays shop. If you need some socks for that Christmas stocking, stuffer with those socks. You selling those now? <laughs> that, I have not. you? Jays care is. Over five gets that first one by Brasso. Brasso came into the game as a defensive replacement. He was retired in the fourth inning in his only previous plate appearance on a barehanded play by the third baseman. Rays are having some fun this afternoon. They know their next game will be the wild card game. And they are still hollering at Font. He's still laughing too. You can tell. Yeah, Bond's got the upper hand. He struck him out. Well, one thing we know, Wilmer's got some. His ears work. He can hear him. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Outside. Brasso hit five home runs against the Baltimore Orioles this year, and that was the theme that the Orioles heard all too frequently. Labor Torres of the Yankees hit 13 home runs against the Orioles. Late swing, Russell stays alive. Of course, a lot of the Titles will be decided today. The end of the season leaderboard, Cy Young, all of those things will be announced later on in the season. But the batting titles, all of that stuff, American League batting leaders, Tim Anderson will win that title as Font strikes out Grosso. 
quick glance back into Aguilar said, you're not the only one I can strike out. This is our final game of the season, and Pat, you and I have a chance to work with some of the best people in baseball television. Our crew right here at Rogers Center, day in and day out, they bring it. They sure make us look good, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> There's a drive to right field, and this one's going to go. Valera has hit the home run. Brave it, Valera. His first home run as a Blue Jay, and that was a no-doubter. First career home run comes on the final day of 2019. And that'll bring a smile to his face for sure. And that'll make his winter feel a little bit better also with that drive, his first big league home run. Somebody in that bullpen's got to throw that ball back. We've said it a lot this year. It's some kind of season for the home run. Boy, is it ever. That home run makes it 6 1. Congratulations to Barry Vic Valera. His first big league homer. Torino's two seamer goes right to his barrel. And he smokes it out of here. There's a fly ball to the left field. That one's going to stay in the ballpark. Tommy Pham makes the catch. The fan looked like he had a chance to catch it. It hit him and drops mm -hmm. down into the bullpen. So hopefully somebody is out there to get that baseball for Valera. Made a nice play today. Yes, he did. Made a nice play first off. Caught that line drive off the bat of Yandy Diaz and then made a nice barehanded grab off the bat of Mike Brasso in the fourth inning. And now he's got a big league homer. Jonathan Davis pops it up. Aguilar, long run into foul territory, just off his glove. He got it, and at the end of his glove, couldn't make the play. <laughs> and now he's trying to decide who's going to get that souvenir baseball. Good job, Jesus. Nice souvenir for the fan. He tried to sell it like he caught it. It went off his glove, hit the wall, and bounced back. He's going to try and sell it to the umpire right there. <laughs> He wasn't having anything to do with that. Ball on a strike now to Jonathan Davis. Davis has walked in the single. He scored a run in the fourth inning. He scored on that three run home run by Teoscar Hernandez. Bounces this one foul. Swing foul. Jonathan Davis has made some good defensive plays since he's joined the Blue Jays from the minor leagues. Kevin Cash, the manager, on a phone with Stan Borowski, the bullpen coach. Ground ball to short. Robertson has it just in time at first. Two away. Well, that tape room can't do anything without good pictures, and our camera guys here have done a terrific job. Murph down at low third does a terrific job. He's been with us a long time. Jerry up in the high home area, he does a terrific job as well. They're all great baseball fans. Teddy over at high first, he's been doing this for a long time, and Tim's out in center. He too has a great. Eye for the game. They all love baseball. Ryan might have the best seat in the house. He's down there right next to the visitors' dugout. And there's Todd out in tight center. He too has been this been around this team for a long time. There's Steph, who is a great cook, makes a great cinnamon bun. Thanks Good for the job, cinnamon Steph. buns today. <laughs> <laughs> there's Paulie. He is out there behind the home plate. And Eli and Willie, they do a great job with us all the time. That is Paulie's camera. And we want to thank you guys back in the trunk doing all that great work with the remote robo cams. But it's a terrific team here. We're also blessed to have these guys working with us every single day to give you the great pictures that you see on Sportsnet covering Blue Jays baseball. Pat and I have a chance to see crews all around baseball. And I'll put this crew up against anybody. I come. 
ready to work every single day. They know baseball and they love what they do. I second that for sure. Chaz Rowe will take over as Yanni Chirinas gets a couple of outs here in the sixth inning. This is going to be, I think, where Chaz Rowe fits in with this team as they get into the playoffs. We need a big strikeout. You're going to face a right hander. Let's bring you in to try and finish out an inning. Get an out or two. He's got a wicked breaking ball. He's going to get a lot of strikeouts. You can see he's averaging over a strikeout per inning in 70 games this year. But his job right here, get it out, face the righty, and it's probably how they're going to use him in the playoffs. Yeah, he will be a matchup pitcher for sure. Rarely do we see him against the Blue Jays pitch more than any of bat than a batter or two. So this season for Rowe, this will be his 13th appearance against the Blue Jays, a total of seven innings. Luke Maley, the catcher, 0 for 2 so far. Batting with two outs and nobody on. That slider. Well, he can throw that thing. It's just one of those sliders that seems like it just continues to break and break and break. And when he starts it at right handed batters and gets them to freeze, that's when he gets a lot of strikeouts. When he starts it off off the plate, it just sweeps off even more. That time he started it down the middle and it went right to the corner. But you can envision him facing some righties. Let's say they play Houston. They win the wild card and they play Houston. And you know they've got all kind of right handed hitters that they might need to to end innings. Bregman and Altuve and Springer. Two and two now. Yeah matchups are so important and of course we hit mentioned earlier that Charlie Morton will pitch the game for Tampa Bay on Wednesday in that wild card game. He will be the starter. Another breaking ball outside it's a full count. No opener for Kevin Cash in the wild card game Oakland. They expect it'll be Sean Manaya, the left hander who has come back from shoulder surgery and he's pitched very well in his return. Three and two to Maley. Inside that breaking ball stayed off the plate inside and Maley will draw the ball. Now that'll bring the leadoff man to ask Hernandez to the plate to ask has been on base all three times he's come up today. He singled walked and then hit a three run home run his last time up. Had a chance to blow this game wide open Blue Jays lead at six to one. Teask has done a nice job the last two games leading off. He's reached base in six of the seven plate appearances he's had hitting top of the order. And he had two walks in the game yesterday and a home run. There's a fly ball into center. Johnny Davis, the center fielder, moves in and makes the catch. And that'll do it. But Bravik Valera playing in his 54th Major League game hits his first big league home run, a leadoff home run here in the sixth. That makes it 6 1 Blue Jays. 20 season tickets are getting the best price on 2020 Blue Jays tickets by purchasing a season ticket membership today. Visit bluejays.com slash season tickets for more information or to purchase your season tickets. And that is the audio board. And they're the guys that are responsible for all those great baseball sounds. Andrew, Sean, Matthew, and Mike all working hard to bring you the best sound in baseball. And the crack of the bat, the crowd response to the home runs. They do a terrific job setting up the audio for us. And we want to thank them for another terrific season. Daniel Robertson started at second base. He's now playing at shortstop. He had an infield hit off the pitcher's glove the first time up back in the second inning. 
When we're font pumps that fastball vibe it's a one two. Upstairs for a ball. Seventh inning, the Blue Jays. Trying to finish up this season with a W. They have a 6 1 lead. Jays have hit two more home runs this afternoon. Pulled foul by Daniel Robertson. Tasker Hernandez hit his 26th home run in the fourth inning, and Brave Valero hit his first career home run in the sixth inning. Wilmer Font, the second Blue Jay pitcher to pitch here this afternoon. Clay Buckles, five strong innings. He's in line for the win. Inside two and two now. There's a base hit up the middle for Robertson. As we continue to acknowledge this great TV crew here with us at Sportsnet, we want to thank the engineers, Jamie, Craig, and Brian. They do an awful lot of hard work behind the scenes and in the video. Vic, James, Brian, and Jordan, thanks, fellas, for another terrific season. They're in charge of making all those pictures crisp and sparkling bright for you. And we want to thank them. They don't get an awful lot of air time. Well, we want to thank them for all that they do for us during there's, the course of the season. There's a lot that goes into bringing Blue Jays baseball to you on television. We're just the front men. We're, we're we show you what everybody is working behind it. They all make us look good as we try to tell stories, talk about the team. But it's it's a lot of names. That, that don't get a lot of recognition. So thank you all to everybody. Absolutely. Matt Duffy. He has struck out and Monk takes one inside. It's a ball and a strike on the raised third baseman. Jordan Romano. The Toronto native loosening up for the Blue Jays. Another rookie that has had some experience this season. New Jays have used 22 rookies this season, 10 pitching rookies. Final day of the baseball season, so there's looks like all the pennant races are all figured out. Who's going where and what what everybody's going to be doing. But there are some other things that are still up to grab. One of those, what team is going to hit the most home runs this season in the American League? The Minnesota Twins have hit three more home runs this afternoon. They now have 307. Yankees have hit one. They now have 306. How about that? Minnesota on the 4th of August led the Yankees by 33 home runs. And the Yankees really got hot the last two months of the season. But as we speak, Minnesota has a one homer lead. That's always a interesting category. Font will go to first as Duffy's retired. Robertson moves to second. A historic home run season for sure. Yeah. 307, the most home runs ever hit by one team in a two, season. Two teams with 300 home runs. Aaron Judge hit a home run down in Texas today as they're closing Globe Like Park today. How about that? That's a beautiful ballpark, and they will not play there next year. They'll play in a new Globe Life Park right next door. It'll be. A covered retractable roof stadium with artificial turf. Zanino hits a ground ball fair at third. Long throw by Valer. Zanino's read time. Two away. Yeah, it's hard to see that ballpark go. I like that one down there in Texas, but I guess 
the new one's going to be better. What a complex they have built there. Of course, Cowboy Stadium is right there. TNT Stadium where the Cowboys play. They also have an eSport stadium on the property. <laughs> a lot going on there in Arlington. Two outs now. Johnny Davis entered the game as a pinch runner way back in the third. And with swings and misses. Here's another thing that was settled today. Albert Pujols got a hit today to keep his career average up over 300. He now has 3,202 career hits. Yeah, you'd like to see him be able to stay over 300 for his career, but that's going to be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. You look at the home run leaders in America League, Jorge Soler entered action with 47 home runs, two ahead of Mike Trout, whose season came to an early end. Pete Alonso, 53 home runs, leading the National League and the Major Leagues. Anthony Rendon has the league lead in RBIs in the National League. He has driven in 126 going into play today. He's five ahead of Freddie Freeman. Pete Alonso has 120 ribbies. In the American League, how about Jose Abreu? Abreu with 123 RBIs ahead of Xander Bogarts, Jorge Soler, and Rafael Devers. 123 R 23 RBIs? For the White Sox. So they're going to win a batting title. And they're going to lead the league in RBIs with Abreu's 123. Tim Anderson with the batting title. Johnny Davis swings and misses. Throw to first to complete the strikeout. Another good inning for Wilmer. Finally gives up a single and a monthly more. Go to the bottom of the seventh. Kevin Biggio will lead things up for the team. It's Dan, Joanna, Ron, Greg, Troy, Doug, and Dave in that control room. That's where all the action happens. They cut the pictures. The director sitting in the middle of your screen, Troy, wants to shout out to his pal. Pat and wish Pat the best on this final day of the baseball season. That's where our day starts. Absolutely. And we have a lot of fun down there every single day. We have a meeting down there about three hours before every ball game and it's really a lot of fun folks. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about a lot of things that we're going to talk about during the course of the game. You see Nate Lowe at third base. He's taking over at third base as the regulars have come out of this game now. Matt Duffy is out of the game. Nate Lowe was at the. Gavin Biggio has singled and struck out twice. So with that single, he has stretched his streak to 29 straight games reaching base. He hits this one high into the air in right field. Guillermo Heredi, the right fielder, makes the catch. Vigio's retired. He is one for four. Well, a lot of changes, very much like a spring training game now for both ball clubs as everybody is getting a chance to get in the action. Heredi, the right fielder, he's a very versatile outfit. He can play all three outfit positions. This little tune up for the Rays as they will head out to Oakland. After this ball game. So everybody gets in the action. Anthony Alford. He takes a strike. It's two and one. Important offseason for Anthony Alford as he will go to spring training next season, trying to win a job in the outfield. Ground ball is short. He's retired. Two away. Lots of business in the offseason, I think, for the Blue Jays as they get ready for 2020. I think they've got a nice little core of young, everyday players that they can start to build around. Talk with Mark Shapiro. It feels like it feels pretty good about the everyday players that they have here. Where they need some improvement is the starting pitching. And they're going to be looking all winter long. 
to see if they can upgrade that starting rotation. Well, if you're going to become competitive, and I think the first step is for the Blue Jays to get back to 500. Of course, they are. If they hold on and win this game, it'll be 67 wins for them. The Rays have 96 wins, and they're finishing second in the division. That ball is smoked, and it's going to get down all the way to the wall in right center. Rowdy Tellez rips a double into the alley. That's his 19th double of the season. And that'll bring Justin Smoke to the plate. First baseman, number 14, Justin Smoke. Second as Telez will come in. Uh, what a and bat for Justin Smoke. And how about his teammates? Every one of them a standing ovation on that bench. That's where you want to be, right? You want to be out at second base if that is the last hit that he has, where the fans can see him. He's all by himself out there. What a game he's had and possibly his last as a Blue Jay. Now it looks like the bench is trying to figure out who's going to run. Billy McKinney is going to run for him, and Smoke will come off the field. was terrific the fans acknowledging Justin Smoke Charlie Montoya sent a pinch runner in and he was duly honored the respect that he has of all his teammates and coaches and everybody what a what, a, what an outstanding day for him gets a double in the seventh inning and walks off the field. This ball is smoked to the alley in left field. Brave Valera hits one to the base of the wall in left field. He homered in his previous at bat. Now he delivers an RBI double. He's got three hits this afternoon. That is three straight doubles here in the seventh inning. The middle one, Justin Smoke from the right side. Short ups that wall in left field, gets it over the head of Tommy Pham. That will score Rowdy Telez, who had doubled. And his teammates love it every minute of that. Now the youngsters understand the impact that Smoke has had. And the crowd reacts as well. Terrific. And as understated as smoke is, you can bet there are a lot of motions going through him right now. I'm sure he would love to come back to this ball club. He had so many great moments here with the Blue Jays, but he understands the possibility that that might have been his last at bat. Eight to one Blue Jays all is happening with two outs in the seventh inning. Tellez double, Smoke double, and Valera double. And Rowdy Tellez 
And certainly appreciated all of the help he's gotten from Justin Smoke going back the last three seasons in spring training. Smoke always anxious to help his teammates out. And whatever he can do. I remember the image of Tim Mesa on his knees in the mound after he'd hurt his arm and Smoke was the guy that was there to give him support and encouragement. Yeah, he's just a terrific guy. Yeah, terrific teammate, terrific person. I, I remember earlier this year when his buddy Kevin Pillar got traded at the beginning of the season, how it really affected him. Losing someone as close as to him as he was. That, that is shattered as Arena grounds out. That ends the inning, but Blue Jays get two more. And Justin Smoke very fittingly in what might have been his last at bat as a Blue Jay. Hits a double and drives in a run. Way to go, Smokey. Coming to the game and comes up big in the final game of the season. Yeah, that's awesome. A terrific moment for a great guy, Justin Smoke. Larry Rivera, the third base coach, and a guy that works with him a lot in the infield. Acknowledging Smoke's last hit bat. Travis Darno comes off the bench for a pinch hitting at bat and rips it into center field. He is batting in the DH spot, hitting for Andy Diaz. Jordan Romano takes over in the eighth inning, gives up that single to you. Darno. First time that the Rays have seen Romano in this series. He last pitched in the Baltimore series. Gave up a couple of runs in two thirds of an inning. Billy McKinney also into the game. We saw him pinch run for Smokey, who will take over at first base. Tommy Fan has had a good season. Becomes just the second. Rays player in franchise history to have a 2020 season 20 home runs 20 stolen bases. That ball is hit down the right side and that's a fair ball. And a fan hits it so it'll be. A double it might have bounced out of play a ground rule double that fan was over. Inside the seats and. Tommy fam gets a double and he. Looks like have he have go back to third. Looks like he signaled to the bench. He said, "That's good. I'm good for the day." The only regular not taken out of the lineup yet this afternoon. Our fan ends up with a double just inside the line. It's right on the line and bounces into the seats out of play. That fan did not reach over the seats. It was out of play when he made contact with it. So it's a ground rule double. So Donos at third. Jesus Aguilar. Aguilar came into the game as a defensive replacement for G-Man Choi. He struck out in his only plate appearance. That was in the sixth against Wilmer Font. It's just one hard but foul down the left side. That's what they were looking for when they acquired him. They got him from Milwaukee. He's played 36 games with the Rays and he's hit four home runs. They're looking for some some right handed thump. Lots of decisions for those coaches right there. The next couple of days. Outside two balls and a strike. We had talked to Kevin Cash about the makeup of his wild card roster, and he said, We're probably going to take 10 pitchers. It's a one game roster, so you don't need those extra starting pitchers. But that coaching staff will have a meeting. They said they're going to have extensive meetings on Monday to go over the possibility. The rosters don't have to be submitted until 10 a.m. on Wednesday for the wild card game. And you start thinking about all the scenarios. Okay, if we're in the seventh inning and this person is up, who do I want to face them when you're on defense? Ground ball, Valero will go across the diamond as Dorno comes in to score. Second run for Tampa Bay. Travis Dorno, nice trip around the bases. You look at matchups late in the game, early in the game. You look at your offensive team trying to match up with their pitching staff and 
who could help out. They might keep a, a fast runner. Those guys become very important, I think, in the in the postseason when you don't score a lot of runs, you don't hit a lot of home runs. You might have to manufacture some runs. Now, Luke Maley with a quick visit to the mound. I have a chat with Jordan Romano. Guillermo Heredia came into the game in right field, taking over for Avicio Garcia. Tommy Pham, the base runner, in second. It is 8 2. Blue Jays. Jeff Nelson took a little extra time to acknowledge the mound visit by Luke Maley. There goes Fam to third. Maley's throw is a good one, but he is safe. That's a heck of a throw and a heck of a tag from Valera. Luke put it right on the bag. And now Blue Jays are trying to figure out what they want to do. Pham takes off on the first pitch. Look at the throw right there. Well, Luke made a heck of a throw, and there's the glove and tag at third. He's on the bag. Looked like he might have come off momentarily, but the they're asking the Jays if they want to look at it, and they say no. So Tommy Pham will pick up his 25th stolen base of the season. So he moves into third base with one out. The infield will stay back. Guillermo Heredia is the hitter. He fouls it back. There's a base hit into center field and Pham will come in with a second run for Tampa Bay this inning. Heredia with an RBI single. And he will probably finish off his day, Pham, after that stolen base and run score. That should probably do it for him. Kevin Cash leads him in there long enough to get him four at bats. He picks up the stolen base, his 25th of the season. Johnny Montoya is walking out to the mound. Jordan Romano has given up three hits in this inning. He'll be out of the ball game. Jason Adam coming out of the pin. Make sure that they would solidify their position as the division champs. Jason Adam coming out of the bullpen. Making his 23rd appearance of the season. Mike Brasso came into the ball game earlier, taking over at second. That first pitch is outside. Looks like Milwaukee, excuse me, will fall one game short. They are leading right now in the ninth inning over the Rockies. But with that win by St. Louis, they will win the division. Milwaukee now will be the wild card we'll get on a plane and we'll go to Washington from Colorado to Washington take on the Nationals in that wild card game. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Washington sets up the rotation of course Scherzer and Strasburg the two big right handers mm -hmm. Patrick Corbin the third starter would get consideration I got to believe it's got to be Strasburg I mean uh, Scherzer don't you think. Wasn't he down for a while. Yes he was. So you wonder if he's built back up with his bulldog mentality. I want him starting that game. <laughs> exactly. Now Brasso gets a base hit. Off Jason Adam. So that's the fourth hit of the inning. I welcome you that have been watching the Cardinals game We're on Sportsnet one. We are in the top of the eighth. Tampa Bay has scored two runs this inning. And the Blue Jays have an 8-3 lead. 
Blue Jays have hit a couple of home runs today. Teoscar Hernandez homered in the fourth to three runs. Sean Bravik Valera hit his first big league home run, leading off the sixth. Ground ball. Urania goes to second for one, back to first. And Billy McKinney can't dig it out of the dirt. McKinney came in as a pinch runner for Justin Smoke and a low throw. He tried to scoop and couldn't make the play. Now we'll keep the inning alive for Tampa Bay. Urania to Biggio, a little bit of a high throw. That might have messed up his timing around the bag as that runner was bearing down. Billy McKinney just into the game after Justin Smoke was pinch run for. Can't come up with it. Nate Lowe will get his first at bat of the afternoon. He entered the game defensively at third base, taking over for Matt Duffy. Two outs, runners at the corners. Jason Adam trying to close out the Rays here in the top of the eighth. Next pitch, breaking ball misses. Stayed with it and Rob's low of a base hit. Terrific defensive play by Vizio. This looks like it's going to be a base hit into right, but Vizio denies Nate Low. Time now for our Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Joe Siddle in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. It is about to begin. You could win too. Pick the perfect bracket in the 2019 MLB Postseason Bracket Challenge presented by MGM Resorts and compete to win $250,000. Visit MLB.com slash bracket for details. Jose De Leon will enter the ball game and start things off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Jonathan Davis, Luke Bailey, and then top of the order, Teosco Hernandez. Davis tried to check his swing and went around. De Leon was recalled on the 14th of September. It was his fourth stint with the Rays this season. He was a big prospect in the Dodgers organization and then was traded here for Logan Forsythe. And he's been battling injuries, a lot of injuries over the last few seasons. He had a flexor issue as he hits Jonathan Davis, and then he had the Tommy John surgery, and he missed all of 2018. Tommy John surgery March 13th of 2018. Here's that inside pitch to Davis. Just bores in on him and it hits him on that elbow pad. So Davis will go to first. He's been on base three times this afternoon. Michael Perez, a catcher, takes over defensively at first. Guillermo Heredia moves from right field to left. Joey Wendell comes off the bench and takes over in right field. So Kevin Cash shuffling all his players and Luke Mailey gets a base hit to right field. That will bring up Teoscar Hernandez and what a day Teoscar has had for the Blue Jays. The Oscars last at bat, StatCast AI powered by AWS. They Oscar with number 26 on the season, estimated 420 feet. A career season offensively, Teoscar. 
as he is now out of the ball game. So he will finish up with 26 home runs and 65 RBIs, both career highs for Tejas. Derek Fisher pinch hitting for Hernandez. First and second, nobody out. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ball and strike to Fisher. Fisher for the season, hitting 186. This will be his 57th game of the season. 40th with the Blue Jays. Remember, he was acquired in a trade with the Houston Astros. Fisher as a pinch hitter is 0 for 2. One and two now. Before he was injured, when he was part of the race, he was a big prospect in the Dodgers organization, starter guy that they thought they were getting. That could anchor that rotation. But right when he came over here, pitched the season for the Rays, and then got hurt in 2018, needed Tommy John surgery, missed the whole season, and it's been a fight to get back. Pitched in Durham and Charlotte this year. Fisher strikes out. That's the first out of the inning. On our way. And if they get him back, he's a young player. That's another one. They also had a pitcher by the name of Brett Honeywell who was supposed to be a big part of this team, and he was injured a couple of springs ago and has not pitched in the big leagues yet. I mean, they just keep producing player after player now they do a great job of identifying talent and bringing it along and developing it. Kevin busy one for four so far this afternoon goes after the first pitch and lifts it foul Watch the change up. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look for the knuckleball. Knuckle for the knuckleball. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a culmination of a long season. Started back just before Valentine's Day. Everybody reported to Dunedin. Started out spring training. A lot of these guys have spent time in the minor leagues. I mentioned Bizio playing in his 100th big league game of the season. He's had a very good opportunity here. And now they will get uh, an off-season program. You know, you set goals for yourself in the off-season. I want to accomplish this. I want to get stronger. I want to work on my swing. Maybe I can get quicker pitchers. I want to have a little bit more stamina. I want to work on my break ball. So they'll have their off season programs. And a lot of players will take three weeks off or so or the month of October and then crank it right back up again. Get ready. Now it's so much different for these players nowadays. I mean you can afford to just take things off in the wintertime and Work on your conditioning, work on some specifics as far as what you want to improve upon. Foot quickness, strength, arm strength, lots of different things. There are so many different places to go to train yourself, maybe get in better shape, maybe work on your speed. A lot of pitchers go to drive line out in mm -hmm. Seattle, work on a breaking ball and do different things. You and I used to go to Winter Bowl to yep. play Winter Bowl, and that's where we improved and got better. You used to have to go get a job. Yeah. <laughs> had to work to get through the winter. And you couldn't, you couldn't get in shape until you got to spring training. And that's how you got into shape. Absolutely. Teams would go to spring training and they would play themselves into shape. 
players nowadays they come to camp in shape and then they're supposed to work on their baseball skills. Kevin Biggio hanging tough here. He's behind one and two. There is no off season anymore. I don't think for players. There's so much for them to do. A lot of them, at least for the Blue Jays, a lot of them live in the Dunedin, Tampa area. So with the new facilities that they're building down in spring training, they can go to the complex every day. They can hit if they want. They can lift weights. They can do specific things to make them better. Basically, you can play baseball year round now. Vizio strikes out. Third time he has struck out this afternoon. Two away. Blue Jays have finished up fairly strong when you consider the schedule they've had. They played a lot of postseason teams here lately over the last 17 games, 11 and 6. Had a good OPS as a team. They've scored almost five and a half runs a game. They've hit 31 home runs. But as we heard from Mark Shapiro, the CEO, president of the Blue Jays, he talked about having better at bats, having higher on base percentage, putting the bat on the ball, cutting down on strikeouts. And, and Shapiro himself said that when you strike out, there's no pressure on the defense. And I think that's one thing the baseball is going to have to address as an industry, trying to have fewer empty at bats, put the ball in play more often. Anthony Alford. Kevin Cash was talking the other day about uh, the Blue Jays and he said you know this isn't going to be a fun team to play in the years to come. He said every time I would look up over the last two or three weeks they're scoring six seven eight runs a game and I think the Jays offensively are just getting started. They've got so many young players that are only going to get better. <laughs> See your Jeff Nelson. Everybody's giving him the business. He thought it was strike three. He said, I almost went through the whole year without doing that, <laughs> where he punched the guy out and it was only strike two. <laughs> You've seen it. Yeah. Now he can do it. And now he can do it. <laughs> That'll end the bottom of the eighth. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. It's been a long season for everyone. Good job with that. Our runners, Jake, Laura, and Olivia, thanks for all your great work over the course of the summer. And we certainly want to thank our stats man Scotty Carson up here who gives us the great numbers all season long. He sits right next to us and helps us get through these ball games. And Pat I want to thank you for another terrific season. This is hard to believe it's our 10th year back together. Yeah 10 years yeah. today ends today. It's been fun. Love coming to the ballpark hanging out with you. It's a great great opportunity for all of us. You see Ryan tapers into the game to pitch. Derek Fisher stays in the ball game. He pinch hit for the left fielder. He's in left defensively. They certainly want to acknowledge Hazel May who's with us all the time and does a great job delivering all those great stories. Hazel May and Arash Madani are sideline reporters that do all the great background work and give us the great stories and tell us more about the players. Big Mike DeAngelis he also helps out with the stats all season long filling in of course Dan Shulman another one of our broadcasters that we enjoy working with it's Going to be in the postseason doing radio for ESPN. It's a great another team. great season. It's a great team to be a part of. And of course we want to thank you the fans who have been loyal and you tune in you watch these ball games and yeah there's been some painful games this season but the future is very bright and we want to thank you for your support over the years. It's been fun bringing these baseball games to you. There's a strike. Scott Carson up in the booth with us and we have the best vantage point in all of baseball. Get a chance to sit up here and watch great baseball games. See these great ball players over the course of a summer. It's a lot of fun coming to work every day. And okay, now we'll have some time off some time off to watch. I think the postseason is going to be outstanding first of all in baseball and then we'll get to hunker down for a little bit in the off season then we'll all get to all get together again in Dunedin <laughs> next spring to do it all over again for everyone uh, next year. After our visit with Mark Shapiro he was very optimistic about the 
situation in Dunedin with the ballpark there in Dunedin. He said it's going to be ready. It look like a brand new ballpark next spring. So that's encouraging as everything is upbeat around the organization. But I mean, there's no kidding yourselves. There's a lot of work to be done for this yeah. ball club. They want to get back to contention, and they have made some steps in the right direction. He was telling us off air they're going to have the uh, practice facilities going to be ready. Everything when the team reconvenes in Dunedin in February or March, everything's going to be ready for them to step on the field, have everything ready, start off the season on a good note. Mike Zanino grounds out to the third baseman, Brevik Below. We want to remind you that MLB postseason will be right here on Sportsnet, and we'll have all of the games. It all begins October 1st. First game will be the National League Wild Card game. The American League Wild Card game will happen on Wednesday. The Divisional Series will start on Friday, and we'll have it all for you right through the end of the World Series. I think the Wild Card games. I mean, we were part of that when the Blue Jays were in it three years ago. Nail biting every inning, every decision that the manager makes has an outcome. Has something to do with the outcome of that game. So I think the wild card games are going to be fantastic. And you get right back into it and those superpowers are going to be locking up against each other. You can see it coming. How about the Twins and the Yankees, the two best home run hitting ball clubs in the game. They'll be. Going head to head in the division series. Houston will play the winner of the wild card game. That's either going to be Tampa Bay or Oakland. But there are so many good teams and some dominant teams. Of course, the Yankees, the Twins, and the Astros have all won over 100 games. Atlanta won the East. St. Louis won the Central, and the Dodgers won the West. So the Washington Nationals and the Brewers are playing a National League wild card game. And you know what? I can't say this is the team that's going to dominate. I mean, I think everybody has a chance to beat everybody. E even the wild cards versus Houston, even with their great pitching. I can't find like, well, watch out for this team. This is a dark horse team. I mean, like Washington, everybody's talking about Washington. They're playing good baseball right now. They've got great pitching. But they can be easily upset also. Yeah, it was really interesting too because the Brewers had the best record in September and they lose two big games to Colorado. And it was the bullpen that let them down. And that had been the strength of the ball club. Johnny Davis strikes out. Ryan Tapera gets the strikeout, two down. And the Dodgers have been the best team in baseball all season long. But they haven't been playing great right now. I mean, it, it's a hard thing to win 11 games in October to win it all. Dodgers are trying to have their best season ever in their history. It's amazing that the Dodgers have lost in the World Series the last two seasons. And they've gone to the postseason now six straight years. They're up nine to nothing. That would be their 106th win of the season, their most wins in a season. In their history, going back better than the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers, who had 105 wins. Here's Travis Darno. He entered the game as a pinch hitter and got a base hit. This time he pops up, and this could do it. Vizio, the second baseman, calls for it, and that'll put the wraps on the 2019 regular season. Dustin Smoke, in what might have been his final at bat, hits an RBI double. The Blue Jays went to Oscar Hernandez had a big three run the home run. Kevin Vigio extends his games reaching base streak to 29 in a row. Valera with his first big league homer. A lot of good things happened this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Clay Buckholz gets the W with those five innings. That's his 90th career win. Tay Oscar with another home run. But I think the whole story is about Justin Smoke and what he has meant to this organization, what he has meant to this team, and having a big day today. A couple of doubles, three RBIs, and an opportunity to come off the field where everybody can see him after that double. They can all cheer for him. You just saw the respect that the young players have for that veteran. Charlie Montoyo has his first season as a manager under his belt. 
crowd of 25,738 acknowledging the Blue Jays as they win their final game of the season. And a lot of good things happened. 22 rookies played for the Blue Jays this season and one quasi veteran, Justin Smoke. A terrific year for Smokey. Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for another great season. Stay tuned. Here's Jamie and Joe in Blue Jays Central.